I'm Rob. On this video today, we're going to explore why sometimes on a CNC project we have tooling marks like this. When we see marks like this, we know it's a bad day. We know there's a lot of sanding in our future just to get this cleaned up. The real question is, what causes these marks? You have probably seen posts where people ask what is causing tooling marks like these on their CNC project. I'm going to explore several of the common replies to those posts and why some of those responses make sense and why they might not make sense when we dig a little deeper. After looking at some of those common replies, I will show what caused those marks on my project. I am certainly not saying that what caused the marks on my machine is what is causing the marks on everyone else's machines. It actually surprised me how these tooling marks could be made on my machine in that way. The point I'm trying to make is you need to learn the ins and outs of your specific machine and that includes learning the strengths and weaknesses of your machine too. So when someone does post that question what causes these marks, the first reply often is tramming. This was not a tramming issue. If you look close at the photo and the image I'm supplying here, you can see where the lines are level, just at different heights. On a tramming issue, the cuts are at a diagonal. They're not level. So this clearly was not a tramming issue. What other possibilities are there? Often people suggest that it's a loose coupler. And that's legitimate, though if you look at the pattern here where it's consistent up, down, up, down, that's probably not what this one is. To check if you have a loose coupler, put a mark on your thread rod or pulley if you have one, your coupler, and on the shaft if you can get to it. After you're running it, if you see those larks don't line up anymore, you need to tighten up your coupler. The next thing people will suggest is you're losing steps. Again, this is such a consistent pattern, it does not look like it's losing steps. If you want to test that, mark a spot on your project, very exact, and then document the X, Y, Z position with that. Run the program, and then move back to that spot and see if your X, Y, Z are the same again. If they're not the same, then you are probably losing steps. Another suggestion you might get is there's slack in your z-axis. That actually would be a legitimate concern to really check out. If you have slack in your z-axis, it would explain going up and down in different directions. So the way to test that is go out to your CNC machine, grab the bit, and then just lift up and down and see if there's any movement. Possible explanations to slack in the z-axis would be loose nuts and bolts, or your stepper has issues. If you can move the shaft either direction, left or right, like in that photo, it's probably going bad and needs to be replaced, and that would explain that issue. So do you have any theories on what actually caused this in my scenario? Here's a before and after photo of with the issue and a simple change to get rid of the issue. All it was was a dust shoe. I have a very short bit in, a dust shoe with very long and thick heavy-duty bristles, and that combination caused that much distortion. Or you say, I've got a flimsy machine. That's not the case. It is plywood, but it's built very well, and I'd compare it to most mid-level hobby machines. For this project, I did a simple thing in VCAR Pro. I made a basic amoeba shape, not much to it. My thought process is I want the tool path to go up and down when we're doing this, and I want some spots where we short tool path, short strokes, long strokes, and the full length here. So let's look and see how I did that. I did a pocket, and I set up a raster at 90 degrees. I do have a profile path set in here too. So I set it for 80% step over, which is incredibly aggressive. I would never do that in real life. Usually I go 40%, maybe even 30, depending on what I, bit I have. So going 80 is very aggressive, and that's what I want. Let's, let's, let's push this bit hard and see how bad it will be. That's kind of the goal here. Okay, we'll go ahead and save that. Or actually, it's already been saved. We'll close it. Let's go to preview. And let's... Oops, I better check the box first. And let's preview it. So first thing, it goes around the outside, then the long steps, and then two sets of short steps. So... Hopefully that made some sense. We'll see it in real life in the machine in just a second here. Here's my machine cutting that piece we've been looking at this whole video. Note how far away from the gantry the shoe extends to make room for the hose connect. Also note how much those bristles are bending. They are quite thick and actually takes quite a bit of pressure to do that. The further your shoe gets away from the gantry or rails, the worse the issue gets. Think of the leverage you get with a breaker bar. 
Same principle here. The further you get away from the rails, the more the leverage gets multiplied. Like I said earlier, I tried to stack the deck against getting a good result for this video. I would never use this dust shoe with that bit. I have a different shoe for shorter bits that will not cause these issues, and I would never do a step over of 80%, plus I'm also cutting at 150 inches per minute. So please don't think this is a true representation of the quality work I normally do. Here's a quick shot of the dust shoe I'd normally use for a short bit like this. It's made of the clear vinyl that when for a long bit or long strips it will bend in a lot from the vacuum pressure and not work very well with the dust collection. But for short bits like this it doesn't bend in that much and actually works very well. And then here's a final shot of the before and after again of the piece we just cut. If you thought this video was informative please like the video and consider subscribing to my channel.